gosh, what you're doing isn't working. You should probably try something different. Yeah. It's viewed as a positive. The seventh or eighth time that comes up, then you know, yeah. there's a pattern there. Yeah, being good at failing fast forever is not really good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's all these wonderful things. The important thing to keep in mind is the question of sort of the scalability mm -hmm. and the applicability of what you're doing. The, the issue with one-offs is that you have seven different one-offs right. that each pull you in a different direction and if they all pull you in a different direction you're going to end up split into seven pieces and not surviving. Uh, the main thing that I think gets investors excited about putting money into a company that's already generating some revenue, $100,000 a month is say it's small, but that's a lot more than mm -hmm. most of the startups yeah. that are out there yeah. trying to raise money, <laughs> is the, the notion of, oh, we figured this out, we have this mm -hmm. fit, oh, we mm -hmm. know, in, in the enterprise world, it's, oh, we know the job title of the person at the corporations <laughs> that we're going to go sell to, mm -hmm. yeah. and we know we have the, the, the PowerPoint the, name, the name of the wallet. We have the name of the wallet. <laughs> we have the PowerPoint deck that they that. respond to. We know which terms to use. Yeah. Or on, in the consumer world, it's... We know which marketing channels actually return, you know, 4x, 5x, and you know the thing that will drive investor crazy is somebody saying, "Well, we need some money to spend on marketing so we can figure out um, how to grow the business." I'm like, no, 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 hold on, you guys figure out how to grow the business first, then we'll give you money. About, uh, is that you know, constant contact is a company everyone's mm -hmm. heard of, public, been very successful. And it turns out that the way, it, at least according to the, the interview with the folks there, I read it, that the way they did their marketing is they actually sent people to various chambers of commerce to explain to small businesses why they do email marketing. That sounds insane, right? right? Who not are, for the time. Who, not for the time. <laughs> but who, who would ever think to do that? But the reason they were able to do that is that you know, the lifetime value of a customer ended up being very high because mm -hmm. the customer sure. would stay for an average of 45 months. Mm -hmm. Which is a lot, Mom. as you guys all know. Okay. Uh, so the life—that's where the lifetime value is really important because it essentially determines what kind of marketing you can do. Incontrovertible. I think the the issue uh, is finding problems that could be solved by a couple of people okay. with some computers and, and an Amazon S3 account. That's the issue. <laughs> so many of those problems yeah. require greater greater amounts of capital yes. and, and expertise than most people have. Yes. Um, the other thing that is a pet peeve of mine, I think, is that with the growth of this tremendous number of accelerators, it's wonderful that we have all these accelerators, yeah. it's wonderful that we have so many resources that are available to entrepreneurs now, but the sort of way in which they've polished their pitches into a yeah. very set formula that is you know, just designed to present the company from a marketing perspective, I don't see entrepreneurs as often sort of having a conversation. Instead, they have certain phrases that they, this is Mary, Mary is blah, 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 and we're killing it. We just raised $300,000, and if you're interested, come talk to me afterwards. And, and I think that there's this tremendous focus on the fundraising process, right. which is working to the detriment of focus on the product and the actual go-to-market. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why you see so much interest in things like Kickstarter is sustainable growth is not going to get traditional venture investors excited. It's just not. I mean, yeah. in, in sustainability yeah. in the sense of a company being sustainable, great. Sustainable in the sense of this company will never get beyond a certain size, it's just not interesting to this ecosystem okay. because we have LPs or our own money or returns that we're looking to deliver. Uh, but, you know, Kickstarter has become wildly popular. I know. Uh, one of my child's classmates had an idea for a project, and it was written about in the Palo Alto Weekly recently. It was covered as part of their thing on Kickstarter, and they put it out, they did a video, and they're raising $20,000, and I'm like, great, and I contributed, and that's fantastic. And that's a company that's never, ever, 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 ever going to raise venture capital. So it's true fund fundraising. Exactly. Right. And it's great that there's new crowdfunding. I don't expect crowdfunding to replace venture capital. There are a whole host of reasons we could go into for that. But I do think that there are going to be alternate fundraising models outside what the no panel, the non-panelists traditionally do uh, that will be viable. So the ultimate thing that we all bump up against is the overall size of the global economy. Right. The overall size of the global economy doesn't increase 20% a year. Right. It just does not. Uh, and the analogy that I like to use is I started off in entrepreneurship back in the first dot-com boom and 
we would have these charts and Mary Meeker would still put them out <laughs> where it would show the whole amount of advertising being spent on TV and radio and newspapers and here was the internet. It was like the internet is 20% of time but only 2% of spending and so at some point in time it's going to increase. And that, in fact, eventually did happen. The internet advertising dramatically increased. Now internet advertising represents something like 30% of the time we spend and 30% of the spending. And so that effect happened. But that means that that period for traditional online advertising is now over. That expansion is not going to be there. Now the expansion is mobile this 25% of time and 2% of spending. And that will eventually play out. It's always the case that there are going to be areas that are going to grow at the expense of others. The internet grew at the expense of newspapers. Mobile will grow at the expense of something else. Yeah. And so you can ride the particular trends that are on the uptick even within an overall global economy that's only growing at a couple of percent a year. 